Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I have just a couple of announcements. On August 6th is the next Intro to Plant-Based Nutrition conference call. This is the kickstart program to help you understand the science and the skills needed to adopt and maintain a program of dietary excellence or a wellness forum style plant-based diet. And then fall semester starts in just about six weeks. It is time to get registered. We're offering several interesting classes, including a class on nutrition and obesity that I'll be teaching. And if you need information on any of that stuff, call our office and we will be happy to help you. And as it pertains to fall semester at the Wellness Farm Institute, please don't wait till the last minute to register because as much as we do love the thrill of last minute entries into our program, the less of that we have going on, the calmer things are here at the Wellness Forum. All right, so for the next few sessions, I'm going to be talking about Dr. Campbell's new book, which came out just a few months ago, Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition. And the reason I chose to do this is, first of all, I think there's so much information in here that people need to know. And I know that all of you, even if you bought the book, may not have read it yet. And I've also had inquiries from some people who've said, I really like this book, but if somebody could just maybe simplify some of this stuff and give me the talking points that I need to know, it would be helpful. So that's what I'm going to do for the next couple of weeks or so. And of course, I'll post my whole uh, written piece on the um, in the Health Briefs Online Library so you can access it there if you'd like to use pieces of this uh, for the stuff that you do. All right, so let's talk about whole, and I'll just start by giving you some perspective. The China study, which was Dr. Campbell's previous book, showed millions of people how to eat and why they should eat that way. And the new book, Whole, Dr. Campbell tells us why this information is still not widely accepted and why it probably won't be anytime soon. The government, the healthcare profession, the system, hundreds of drug and device makers, they all have a powerful incentive to maintain the status quo. And the status quo is $2.7 plus trillion dollars a year that flows through the healthcare system. And uh, it will most certainly continue to increase until we're not only sicker and fatter, but bankrupt if we don't change our ways. So I think if this book catches on the way China study did, I, it will almost make a bigger difference in terms of changing public perception and health. Now the first part of the book outlines the research supporting a plant-based diet for preventing, stopping, and reversing disease. There's a lot of new information in this section, so if you read China study, you won't be bored, but there is also some of the China study information in here so that a person who hasn't read China study will be able to follow along with what the book has to say. Campbell is certainly not afraid to criticize and expose those who misrepresent our health status and our healthcare system, starting with the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, he points out that the third leading cause of death in the United States is side effects of prescription drugs, which actually kills about 106,000 people every single year. And uh, that's more, by the way, than die in traffic accidents. But he has um, a chart, actually. It's taken right from the website, the CDC's website, showing that the CDC doesn't list that as one of the leading causes of death. Why? Because, according to Campbell, ad, uh, admitting that that admit it would because, according to Campbell, admitting it would be bad for business. And if the United States government cares about one thing here, and this is direct quote, it's the economic interests of the medical establishment. End of quote. Campbell is the master of using analogies to make his points, and I like that, I do it too. And he poses the question, I think this is interesting, what if a whole foods plant-based diet were a pill? That pill would prevent most diseases, it would help people quickly reach their ideal weight, it would cure erectile dysfunction, reduce global warming, shut down factory farms, and reduce malnutrition worldwide. The inventor of the pill would be a billionaire, and should be. The problem is that our diet is not a pill and marketing is difficult when the drug companies and medical establishment have billions of dollars to spend promoting their view of health care. As all followers of plant-based nutrition know, Campbell has detractors, some of them pretty loud and noisy, who have criticized his work, and he addresses them by uh, discussing how to evaluate health research, which certainly puts a lot of stuff that they put forth um, out uh, as not really being valid. As usual, he presents it so that anybody can understand. You don't have to be a healthcare professional to read this book. Um, three important questions he says we should ask about research. And the first one, is it true? Are there studies supporting an idea, are the studies supporting an idea properly structured, well conducted, and accurately reported? Of course, funding can skew results, and so reliable results are those that have been replicated in many studies by different researchers and funded by different sources. The second thing, is it the whole truth? Are unintended 
consequences and side effects accurately reported. This is particularly important when evaluating drug research. And the last thing is, does it matter? Many quote unquote health breakthroughs are really not worth talking about. Cancer drugs that extend life by 30 days but kill most patients early, and cholesterol lowering drugs that really don't reduce the risk of a heart attack or death are examples. Campbell states that one can determine if a health intervention matters by asking these three questions. <coughs> How quickly does it work? Well, the right diet resolves a lot of health issues very quickly. How many health problems does it solve? Well, the right diet solves most chronic and degenerative conditions. And how much will my health improve due to the intervention? The right diet makes an enormous difference as opposed to traditional medications, which only change biomarkers and not overall health. And again, I constantly refer to the drug makers' web pages where you can see that a lot of these drugs are simply not effective. In his discussion of the science, Campbell addresses a common criticism of Esselstyn's work, which I think is worth talking about, which is the, number of, uh, the small number of participants in his initial study. Now, Esselstyn is publishing the results of almost 200 additional patients sometime this year. But the issue is worth discussing so that people aren't so quick to discount smaller studies. The depth of the effect of an intervention determines the number of subjects needed to show that the results are meaningful and not a result of chance. The smaller the difference, the more subjects needed. So let's take drug research, for example. Let's say that a drug reduces the incidence of an event from 4.5% to 3.5%. Several hundred, if not several thousand patients are needed to show that this is statistically significant and not a result of chance. But let's look at Esselstyn's study. If you remember, and I think most people watching this know this, in his initial 24 subjects, he had 18 compliant patients and six who were not. There were no events, no additional surgeries, no drugs in the 18 who remained compliant and the six who decided to go back to their old diet, there were 11 adverse events. And so um, that is such a stark difference and the effect is so large and the difference is so profound that the likelihood that the results, even though the study sample was small, uh, are due to chance are just virtually nil. The medical establishment gives lip service to diet and lifestyle, but I love the way that Campbell criticizes this. He refers to the advice given, such as take the stairs and use alcohol in moderation as pablum for the public. He says that they're politically correct statements lacking specificity and substance. And he returns, he even refers to the term diet as promoting unsustainable spurts of healthy eating that usually result in worsening health and more weight gain. So even to the extent that the medical establishment acknowledges that diet may be an issue. I don't think they do a very good job of it, and neither does Dr. Campbell. He delves much more deeply into political issues he's faced throughout his career. He likens the current medical paradigm, which works against any type of improvement, um, as, as similar to the paradigm that reigned for thousands of years that the sun revolved around the earth. And he says sometimes paradigms are so encompassing that you don't even know that there's anything else. And so when Copernicus began challenging the theory of the sun revolving around the earth, he was challenging common sense, a millennium of scientific agreement, however wrong-headed it was, and an outraged religious community. And there are so many people who have built their careers and in fact their fortunes around the existing paradigm of healthcare. Campbell says these people are prone to act like threatened dictators and they'll do almost anything to hang on to their power. The more they're challenged, the more dangerous they become and I've had firsthand experience with that myself. Campbell states for the record that he welcomes scientific debate. He likes when people try to replicate his findings, even if it is just to prove him wrong. And his critics have helped him to tighten study design and led him to new ways to address nutritional issues. But he also states that many attacks on his findings are different. These people are motivated by people who are threatened by new ideas and, um, and have a lot to lose. And that's an entirely different type of challenge to, uh, to his findings. So anyway, for the next few sessions, I'm going to be talking about whole, rethinking the science of nutrition. I do hope you'll read it, but my assumption is that you might not, so I'll try to share as much as I can uh, within the confines of the time limitations we have here. So that's all for now. Pass this on to anybody who you think should watch it, and I will talk to you again on Thursday.